Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to your own Silicon Valley Tech Talks channel. This is your host Faisal Vatu from San Jose, California. In today's show, we're going to learn about innovation aspects of mobile network operators and especially see how mobile network operators industry is looking at AI as an opportunity. We are fortunate to have Usman Javed as our guest today. Usman is Chief Product and Marketing Officer at Orange Business. Orange Business is an entity of Orange Global which is a global telecommunication company with headquarter in France. Before Orange, Usman was Managing Director at Amazon Web Services, responsible for services delivery in Europe, Middle East, and Africa regions. And before that, Usman held executive leadership roles at another global telecommunication company, Vodafone Group. So without any further delay, let's go and talk to Usman and learn from his insights. Hello, Usman. Welcome to our show. How are you doing today? Hi, Faisal. I'm doing very well. Thank you. So, Usman, uh, you have spent significant time of your career in mobile network operator industry. Uh, there's a perception that innovation pace in mobile network operators industry has been slower as compared to adjacent uh, segments in the value chain. Take uh, cloud industries example or mobile devices example. Do you agree with this perception? And if yes, do you expect anything changing in the future? <laughs> Well, I think, first of all, maybe I don't fully agree um, with that perception. I think if you look at from the advent of the Internet and then how mobile has magnified and accelerated the use of Internet into the way we live, I think there is a huge contribution of mobile and the mobile industry to today's ways of working and the digital age. One may argue that potentially the value that the mobile industry have created for other services over the top services is much bigger than the value that the mobile services and mobile operators are able to capture for themselves. I think one thing that I would actually agree with you that uh, the mobile industry is behind, which is more around the core telco services. So if you think about the messaging uh, services, SMS remains SMS today, whereas we have seen the advent of WhatsApp. And if you think about voice services, still the same voice service the voice messaging, uh, the voice mail experience have been very similar. So I think one area where we could have done better is to rethink about the core collaboration services that the telco offer and be able to reinvent them, which I believe some of the other more global players, which were not bound to local regulations uh, and have got a more sort of a global view and not limited by footprint, uh, were able to do so. Clearly, I think there's a more we could have done, but I also believe that mobile has always been a catalyst of innovation for the broader industry. Orange Business has shared their ambitions for reshaping the future of network-related services and offering customers cloud-like experience. Can you elaborate a little bit more on this vision? What would this mean for your customers and would this entail any major shift in your current business model? Yes, yeah, so I would step back a little bit. I think before I talk about our vision for cloud-like experience, I'll talk about our customers. So our customers, or in business customers, are mainly enterprises from very large multinationals to national corporates to small medium enterprises. And one thing which is consistent across all enterprises today is every modern business today is a technology business. Even if you are a corner shop or you are a very large multinational uh, automotive manufacturer, technology is playing a pivotal role in any business. And, and in that wave, every enterprise is on a journey of digital transformation. And if you ask yourself question, okay, so what it takes to do a, a successful digital transformation, I think the answer is that you need to have a, a very highly scalable and secure digital infrastructure. And the way uh, we define digital infrastructure in Orange Business is customers are actually looking for three C's. They're looking for connectivity, cloud, and cybersecurity. Connectivity, because you, know, you need to have means to be able to connect to different types of clouds that you have. Cloud is a new ways of doing IT. And once you rely on an internet-based architecture, which is how the cloud works, then you need to have a very high level of security because all your applications are spread out, all your employee base is spread out. If you look at cloud has really transformed last 15 years in the way we consume infrastructure services. The way cloud has transformed the IT is how we would like to transform the network, which is what we call cloud-like experience for connectivity. 
We are bringing the same concepts of cloud to uh, connectivity so the customers can choose what type of connectivity service they want. They want an internet, high-speed internet service uh, to their application, or they want to have a private connection MPLS to their application, or they want to have an SD-WAN link. They want to combine SD-WAN with security and SASE offer. They want to connect to different clouds. All these services should be available in a single pane of glass, and customers should consume the service they want. They should be able to self-service, configure those services, and they would pay as you go or pay based on subscription model. And that is what we define as our vision for cloud-like experience, where we are offering a connectivity as a service platform or network as a service platform to customers so they can consume those services in the way they consume their cloud services. And by doing that, customers would be able to build their secure and scalable digital infrastructure built on three Cs, because what we do is we bring all the three Cs together into one single platform. So customers can decide to host their application on a public cloud. They can set up the connectivity between the, the public cloud and their endpoints. And then within the same, they can also ensure end-to-end -end security. So those three Cs coming together through one single platform is what we are working on as part of our vision. How is the mobile network operator industry viewing AI revolution? What's in it for them? And especially for Orange Business, what are the AI opportunities you are envisioning? Well, I think the opportunity is not just for telco industries and for um, you know Orange Business, but actually it's for the entire you know entire planet. Just purely in the telco space, I saw a recent study from McKinsey, which suggested that it's a huge potential both for a bottom line and top line for telcos. So their estimation is that in next two years. Uh, the telcos can gain three to four percent point EBITDA improvement, and in five years that can get to a, about uh, eight to ten percent, and and seventy percent according to McKinsey, the the Gen AI impact in telcos is seen in the sales and the customer support. I talk to a lot of my telco peers. I talk to a number of enterprises. Everybody is doing something in terms of improving their internal operations with AI and Gen AI. For example, in Orange, we have created an internal Gen AI platform, which is based on open AI. Every employee can access that platform on a daily basis, but today we already have 30,000 active users on that platform. And we have a number of use cases. We have software developers using this platform to develop code using Gen AI. We have people doing document search, create sales proposals, uh, we're doing contract analysis. So there are many, many use cases. Every organization is, is doing things around that. And that's what I call everyday AI. I think this everyday AI concept is very much use AI in order to get more time to do on more meaningful stuff and then be able to you know, use AI as an assistant to do a lot of our day-to-day -day tasks. I believe where there is real opportunity for telcos is in what I call game-changing AI. Think about new products and services. Think about how we can empower new experiences for consumer as well as enterprises. So, I mean, I give you a couple of examples what we're doing in, in our business. We are reinventing SMS. We have created a conversational SMS where there is a number, you send a message, you get a response back so you can start a chat. And we have integrated that with a Gen AI engine so that you can have a much more intelligent exchange. So it's a new chatbot experience powered by SMS. I gave example of SMS. You can think the same for voice. Today, you know, if I call you and you are not available, uh, then you know, I, I, I'm dropped off to uh, the voicemail. Tomorrow, someone which is your personal assistant, AI assistant should be picking up the call and say, Faisal is not around. What do you want to do? I say, I want to have a meeting with him. He told me in the recent email that he's ready to have a call on Friday. And then the assistant say, yes, I check in the email. I can fix a slot. And then uh, the slot is set up. Uh, you will have a call. Right? So I think that's another example of a reinvention of uh, core telco services. The other opportunity that we see for enterprises is many enterprises want to get on this AI wave but they struggle the very first step with their uh, ability to trust public cloud for very sensitive data. So we saw this opportunity in the market to create what we call trusted Gen AI platform and services. So we, we created, we have a private cloud uh, offer in France is called Cloud Avenue. 
And then within that, we have deployed some GPUs from NVIDIA and uh, we offer customer GPU as a service. So we can meter the GPU usage. Customer can bring their own large language models, train them in this very sovereign GPU infrastructure. If the customers don't know which model to use, we also partner with French LLM provider uh, called Lighton, and we can offer LLM as a service. Or if the customer says, oh, I just want to have a SaaS application to do document management, then we can also offer that based on the, using the LLM from our partner and also the infrastructure from us. So we can offer a completely secure, highly compliant, transparent, highly auditable, trusted Gen AI services in terms of you know, helping enterprises to achieve their business outcome. I mean, I, I believe that telco as an industry, over the years, we've been very much squeezed in terms of our CapEx and also our p &L. So we have become very much operational efficiency driven. AI give us new uh, direction to be able to think about innovation and think about creating more value for consumer and the enterprises. Well said, Usman. Um, I would like to double click on, on the connectivity element uh, you mentioned earlier. I know, and as you also said, connectivity is a key pillar of Orange business future strategy. So what are the key innovations in cellular 6G or Wi-Fi you are really excited about? Well, I think I'd like to clarify our approach with 6G. So when we think about 6G, we think about more a platform approach. And the best example I can give is Tesla, right? So Tesla is not a car. Tesla is a software platform on wheels. And, and when Tesla want to deploy new services, they don't need to deploy new hardware. They just upgrade additional software and that software would provide more services. In some cases, you need to upgrade hardware, but not in all cases. And that's where we want to be with 6G. We want to position 6G as a platform and that platform provide iterative development of new services and mostly software-based services so we can create more value for our consumers and enterprises. So that's sort of the platform approach. Secondly, the platform need to be ground up supporting AI. I think we spend a lot of time as an industry to think about how we can use AI for networks and we optimize, uh, we do capacity management using AI, we do network planning using AI. So there is a lot of AI for networks, but what we don't do is the network for AI, which means that if you have an AI traffic, how the network should treat that. According to Omdia, 70% of the traffic on the network by 2030 will be AI traffic. And if you really think through this, especially the Gen AI traffic versus the traditional AI is very different from a traditional traffic, which is internet-based. Internet traffic is very much caching-based traffic. Uh, the caching concept is very strong. Everybody wants the same content and you cache it closer. In Gen AI, there's no caching because every time the content is generated on, on real-time basis. In a general web-based traffic, you have a very uh, small request. For example, you want to download a page or download a movie. Your download is very high. Whereas in Gen AI, is the, is the opposite because in the prompt that you send, you send a lot of input for uh, high processing. So your request is very heavy. In Google Gemini 1.5 Pro, I guess, uh, you can have 2 million tokens in the request. So I think the point I'm making is that the AI traffic is very different. So the second pillar of our strategy is to, to sort of ground up, build the network which is ready to support future AI. And, and Edge plays a critical role in that because you would see more and more the inference need to happen at the edge, whereas the training of those models need to happen in the cloud. And this is a sweet spot for the telco operators to be able to monetize the, the edge capability, which is something that we were dreaming for a long time. And the third thing, you know, your platform approach and your AI, uh, you know, by design can only work if you integrate with the rest of the ecosystem, which means you can integrate with the hyperscalers uh, because certain applications of customers would be sitting in the, in the public cloud or you integrate with other telcos because you need to create a consistent experience. And here the role of APIs is critical. So really the three things that excites me, the platform model, as we think about 6G, ground up building the networks for AI, and thirdly, APIs to integrate with the wider ecosystem. Thank you very much, Usman, for joining our show. I know it was late for you in the evening, and I'm sure audience learned a lot from your insights. Thanks, Vassal. It was my pleasure to be on your show. Thank you.